C2D. It gets you higher, er, in, in, they'll end up buying more boat and less of everything else. Because now boats aren't distorted in price. Um, in many emerging market economies, yes, I mean, that's a different topic, but the attempt, because it's not that easy in the U.S. to avoid taxes of those sorts, but in, certainly, absolutely, around the world, in emerging markets, sort of, taxes often backfire. You tax the formal sector, and then it sort of dampens the ability of the formal, formal sector to grow, and it gives more incentive to the black market or, or the informal sector to grow, and the problem with the informal sectors is they tend to be low in productivity, lower in wages, and the, the end government starts money, the government needs to do things to help a country develop. It's a, it's a vicious circle that sort of many emerging market economies get stuck in, trying to get some revenue by taxing, the tax is getting avoided. Yeah. But we'll do that when we talk about development. Okay. So is it a partially a perception thing because it's same amount of money, it just comes out a different way. But I see how it works on the graph. No, it's more than a perception thing. It's actually that they've constrained your choices, and we'd like you to have your choices. Okay. They've compelled you to buy less big boat than you otherwise wanted to by sort of by making it more expensive. Right. But and so you're a little less happy. The same amount comes out of your taxes anyway. Yes. It's the same dollar amount, it's just that it comes out at the end of the year instead yeah. of the day. And that's why I try to give you, I mean, I mean, Big Boats isn't an example, you probably nobody here is Big Boats, but think about something like that, I know for myself, I mean, something you have done, I mean, I think about sort of, I don't know if I bought more, you know, houses and big, you know, bought a little more house than I otherwise would, because I knew I was going to get a tax break. I would have preferred to have bought a little less house, still got the same size amount of money, and spent that money on other things. How and I still have the same amount of money because I, but I only sort of, it's the same, they distorted the price of my house by making it cheaper than it should have been by giving me a tax break on interest rate. And so, but there would be no practical way to actually implement this because you'd have to know each individual person. The there is no, absolutely no practical way to implement it. No. No, but they sort of, when economists talk about there's two components to our tax code being a mess. There's the one component that there's an awful lot of time, frustration, transaction costs, and accounting fees that are sort of provided and demanded to figure out how to get your taxes lower. In a simple tax system, you wouldn't have to have that. That's not the part market economists care about, but that's a real part of tax reform, is that it sort of frustrates people, they feel like other people are getting off better than they are, at least some people are. People in the equivalent situation, one knows about sort of tax loopholes or codes that the other person doesn't. And all of them change the prices of things. They, they all get us to either sort of do more of certain things, do less of certain things that we otherwise wouldn't have to avoid the taxes. That's the part that the economists don't like, the inefficiencies. But there's two components of a messed up tax code. The one part is lots of transactions, lots of accounts to pay for, and lots of frustration over a needlessly complex tax code, and a level inequity too, because some benefit a lot more than others within that, based on what they can purchase, depending on the situation. But the microeconomic part of that is we cause extra, certain things to be sort of demanded more, and other things to be demanded less than we otherwise would, based on where things are taxed more or taxed less within the income tax system. All things that are given sort of credits are essentially over-provided then by us, we demand too much of them. We know if we demand them, we avoid taxes. Some of them you might like. But a lot of people sort of get concerned. With they, one of the more popular ones would be like charitable, gift, charitable giving. People would be concerned. Now, the, and the true Michael Collins would say, that's a price distortion. You shouldn't give anybody a tax break for charitable giving because people should give the amount they want to give to charity and the efficient amount and then sort of do whatever else they want with the rest of the money because they can maximize their utility on their own. But to, yes, the inefficiency is that the person is less happy not being able to buy as much boat, and so if they're given the lump sum tax, they can buy a little bit more boat and be a little bit happier. Now, the principle of this is for, it's not about sort of giving lump sum taxes, it's that 